All right. So I'm desperate. Clearly, I first thing I reach is for a book. I'm gonna read it. Right. This is a book that is the most excellent. And I was I was gonna do a recipe with dried cherries and I couldn't remember what went with the dried cherry so I was thinking white chocolate and sure enough I looked it up white chocolate and I um, but I obviously they didn't have white white chocolate was out at the store because it's like cherry season or something. and so everybody was so that on sale though was butterscotch. So then I was thinking, well, what goes with butterscotch? And I didn't look it up. I'm trying to think what is what is that? Oh no, that's that's on the screen. That's not in the video. Um, so Butter in the pan was not really necessary. Well, I looked it up in that book, and their butterscotch cookies did not even call for any butterscotch. So it wasn't very useful for me and looking for something to, that goes with butterscotch and I still cannot re recall exactly what kind of the cookie it is ideal for so right now I am obviously grabbing ingredients everything going before I start well it would be impossible to do it without it so may as well get this going because this is oops, out of the way so this is my not mine but what I'm using Let's try and say something in this video that is not just about whatever I'm looking at because nobody wants to hear about this or that. Sugar. What was I thinking? I wasn't. Okay, see, this is that. What is even remotely interesting about that? I'll tell you who's the least interested person in, in this. In the entire world, what is that? Are you serious? I'm dead. Oh no, there it is. Maybe. Oh, that that's kind of dry. Right. I'm using it anyway. Bizarre, just bizarre. You know, we get the. We get all kinds of visitors in here at the museum and just throw it all in. I was thinking that lady, well that lady stole one of my bagels, an everything bagel. And that made me not upset, but it made me, I don't know, it isn't really stealing, is it? Because it's just kind of like... Well, I mean, 
she could have asked. But she knew that she could get coffee. And so, well, go, okay, so that's right. I was going to say something. So try to say something of, of meaning here. Because, oh, okay. Well, no. I mean, you get these ideas and you're just like, oh, I can go on the road to Topeka with that one. It's hard to say something meaningful when, when nobody is there. And, oh, do it, do it for yourself, right? The truth is, you're always doing it for yourself. Even if you're like a, sitting there with somebody in front of you, they're, they're kind of like yourself for a second because they're, or they're, because they're part of your perception, so you're kind of doing it for yourself. And if they have some, something that's important to them, then it's immediately going to be important to you also. So it isn't like you struggle to think of something of importance to say to somebody. Wow, this, these are, these are going to be quite the cookies. So the, the thing that I'm learning about when you're doing psychology is that it's all so the theory and most theory just starts with some kind of a person, there's something that something you're trying to figure out, uh, like, uh, like a person who's trying to understand them, trying to impose some kind of a, uh, understanding. Well, not, not, I mean, you're trying to, so that's a, that's a tough one. It's like, is it, are you imposing it on to them or are they or is that like the reality of what is being experienced by them let's give an example somebody is talking or something and you want to understand why are they doing this and like what okay here's a good one you have no I there's so many awful examples out there so I just don't see the point in talking about something that's awful but theoretically somebody is is talking to you and it's really not enjoyable and they're miserable and you're trying to understand if, are they just not with it or what is what is going on here why are they not saying anything is there other than just misery so the the, the thing about it is like if somebody is miserable and they have a disease then you can run some tests so that you can figure out you know, you give them a COVID test or, or you give them, um, you take their blood or uh, you, <laughs> what are the other tests? All kinds of tests you can do. Um, you can look, oh, you can look at them and that's a test. So you'd be like, Hey, um, let me see your arm. You said your arm hurts a lot, and so let me let me check it out. And sure enough, with the psychological illness, it's, it's not like that. Uh, although you can run through some. Oh, okay. So if you remember. This is a test. You when you're when you think it's like oh it's a little too much, 
of the of the liquid or something. And you still haven't done all the good part of the cookie yet. You have to you can add a little bit more flour, but you don't just don't just mix it up more and more and more. You have to leave some chunks in there. Uh, or not chunks, but like some flour so that when you do all this goodies, then you... Alright, so... So, the... Oh, the, the thing about it I realized was I was totally incorrect. And I wish that I could like edit a video. But when that psychologist or psychoanalyst is sitting there with the patient... Look, they don't do that many. They are not mirroring the patient. That's one of like a bajillion. I was just, when you say like some random example, people get stuck on the example and it is like not true. Usually a psychoanalyst is asking all these kind of questions. So I'm doing, because I couldn't, not, but there's a million kinds of a question, or not a million, but a, a list. So the, the point is that you can come up with keywords and stuff, and that's what, a, that's what they do, and see like, hey, is this person triggered right now by this? But it, not really. That's, that's only one kind of a psychoanalyst technique. Most of the time, literally, they're just listening. And there's, there's, oh, all these kinds of silence. So, there you go. Um, but the cool part about silence is that, what, what am I doing right now? Okay, the, cool, the thing about, I'm trying to decide if I put coconut and nuts and cherries and do it. Did I open the butterscotch yet? You know what? Keep it chill. Just keep it simple. Don't even do the coconut. Just do nuts, butterscotch, simple. That's the kiss technique. Keep it simple, stupid. And this is the same kiss technique again. I'm like, oh, do I save some of the butterscotch for like, if I want to make myself a fun treat or make my ice cream better? What do I, what am I going to do with this butterscotch? Just throw it all in, dummy. <laughs> the psychoanalyst is like, hey, I'm not just listening to you, but also I, I am. Tell me about this. And they really want it. People just need to be able to empty their cup. And so it isn't exactly that you're mirroring. I need a knife. It's that you're... What exactly are they doing? Not a knife. I don't know, there's... What do you mean? What are they doing? They're trying to they're trying to create an understanding. They they're just trying for this person who, honestly, they don't have very many support in their life, and so they have to run a test of like, okay, who are your support network? Who who's in your support system? Okay, I am so sick of having this coconut in the fridge. I'm just going to throw it into the cookies. And everybody, it doesn't matter who you are, they at least have like three people in their life, right? So they have like the, who cares? Okay, so you can do a list, but usually they have like, everybody has at least six people, in, six to eight people in their life who are, um, so that's a good reason to not suicide. And also, the fact is that it'll pass pretty soon, and that you're not thinking right. And so, when it, you, it's not 
I mean, it's normal. It's, people say like, oh yeah, it's, it's common. It doesn't mean that it's good or normal or anything like that. But that's. I mean, what if you get somebody in front of you who's just like crazy town? What do you do then? And that happens all the time at the museum, and you're like, well, I have to re I respect this person because they, I don't know, they made it this far. So I have some respect for this person, and so the best thing that you can do is just let them do their thing. No, I'm not that into it, but like, you can give them a tour or something. Yeah, because it is a museum, so you can always do that. Uh, you can like offer them if there's anything that that you can do for them. I mean, it's not like I want to be a psychoanalyst. I don't know why I keep thinking about it. Good point. Oh, I keep thinking about it because the it's like what what good is psychology without being. <laughs> The coffee is done at least, and oh right, what good is psychology? Okay, well it helps you because then you aren't just like running around, like looking at this and that, and instead what you're doing is uh, thinking. Okay, well what? what is What's thinking all about? And you have a, a mind and it is has different functions and there are some normal things in this world like when you're getting older first year you know 30s and I mean you're 30 like then you're just okay teens and 20s you found a structure you finally you find the structure it's the most ideal one and you find your identity through it and when you're 30s then you start saying how do I really do something with you know how do I generate um, I don't want to stagnate here and when you turn you know, it's 15 years segments here. So 45, then you're looking at the last 10. And by then, you're like, okay, the last 10 are, don't want to do that again. You know, I'm not really like, so they're going to do that again. So, cool. Should I lick the knife? <laughs> you know, don't you wish you had some kids here? Who, most psychologists do children, and they they like have they. That's how they understand the world. Is I'm glad I didn't put the dried cherries in here. That would be sickening. But the coconut, we'll see. At least in um, but children. Most of the psychologists who study those uh, are they are they people? I don't know. The, uh, the, the reality is, you get an identity. Teens and twenties, usually there's a complete collapse in the thirties, and by the time you're forty-five, you start to take responsibility. And at that point in time. Good, I was recording. So when you finally start taking responsibility for the last 10 years of your life, you are also thinking about the next 10. And by then you're in AARP. And how do I do this with both? I, you can only do so much, right? Wow, this was an incredible video because I didn't even, I didn't even say anything.
anything and I didn't even put it in the oven. There you go. There it is, waiting for it to cool. We are so spoiled. Oh my goodness. Is it? Yes. That is. What's the word for that? Shiny. All right. Cannot wait to cut this up. So yeah, I, I'm gonna, gonna take a little video of the. All right, here it is. The finished product. <laughs> There, oh, I remembered the word. Put one on the, uh, put one on the website, honey. But, oh yeah, I mean, I'm doing a video, so. I know you are, put it on the website. I'm trying to remember what it's called when, uh, it's like shiny. Um, so there's different aspects of material substance, like uh, there, there's a list of them. They are of strength, adhesion uh, then there's two other qualities anyway shininess is one of the qualities of what luster that's what it's called oh yeah luster luster right. shiny is luster there's one other one other quality of strength luster adhesion some other quality of material anyway <laughs>